love Kalihi Vlogs. One thing great about living in Kalihi is we're five minutes away from everything, everything great. Like today we are visiting the Hawaii State Museum. Look at this gorgeous building behind me. Here's the Hawaii Triennial. Every three years it covers a different thing. This iteration is called Pacific Century or E Ho'oman no Moana Nui Akea. So loosely translated to Pacific Century. So the goal of this triennial is to kind of reorient art history instead of focusing on the conversation between Europe and the Americas, focusing on Hawaii at the center of this historical network and all these international connections sprouting up from it. So that's a huge idea behind the triennial. And we get to see a little bit of this side. This is the Eva Galleries here at the Hawaii State Art Museum. A lot of different first time things for us here. This is the first time we're showing video, first time we're showing audio, first time we're showing vinyl on the walls as the artwork itself. Mm -hmm. A lot of firsts at the, at the Hawaii State Art Museum. So this whole room, any questions? Mm, what, is, what does that mean? Huli. Yeah, huli. Have you had huli huli chicken? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's turn. To turn, yes. Yeah. So okay. huli huli is to flip over multiple times, which is why it's the name of the local Hawaiian artistry chicken style. But huli one time means to flip over, to overturn. So this became a very politically resonant saying in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, when people would say, huli is the system. You know, flip the system over, make the system work for us instead of us working for it. Even to this day, this is still a very politically resonant saying. People still say, hashtag Huli, hashtag Huli the system. Mm -hmm. And you notice this little stamp right here too, yeah. right? Yeah. You see it throughout all the different kinds uh -huh. of vinyl poetry we have on the walls. This is called a hanko. It's like a Japanese signature stamp used by this artist, Wayne Kamuali'i Westlake, in his poetic stylings. So you see like pieces such as this one, yeah? Mm -hmm. What kind of shape do you guys see with the... Mm -hmm. Like a candy. Like a candy. <laughs> Very common. Candy. But it could be um, the DNA. The DNA. DNA. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, really good one. Yes. So there's many different interpretations that can be drawn from this. The one that I enjoy that I think encapsulates a lot of the aspects of the piece is that DNA shape it has, a double helix structure. Mm -hmm. So this piece is called Water a Cow Drinks. It says, Water a Cow Drinks turns to milk, Water a Snake Drinks turns to venom. So the way I interpret this is a lot of uh, about the nature of being, right? Uh, what about us makes us either destructive or supportive, you know? Mm -hmm. You can be like the cow making the water into milk, very nurturing, mm -hmm. or the snake turning the water into venom. It doesn't matter the original source, it matters the intention of the animal controlling it. Move, manipulating it, moving the font, changing the letters, the shape, the size, the boldness, and thinking about how these changes affect the meaning of the poetry for you guys, the viewers. Mm -hmm. So this is one of these very famous concrete poems, as well as the other ones we have throughout the galleries. Is so that why it's down here? This one, yeah, this is a concrete poem, yeah. yeah. Again, thinking about how changing it from on a page to on the floor, how does that change our interpretation of this piece? Now it looks like a big spill, <laughs> right? Can you guys, do you guys know any Hawaiian by chance? No. <laughs> a couple of terms, can you pick up any Hawaiian words from this arrangement of letters right Belly. Here? I don't know if that makes sense. Which one? Pele. Pele, yes, Pele, goddess of volcanoes. Yeah. She's definitely here, P-E-L-E. P-E-L-E. po Pupule. And, yeah, is there Pupule there? Pupule no? is here, and that's funny enough that that is the title of this piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, I know. So this is called Pupule. You know, Pupule to be crazy, to make crazy. So you can kind of pick up on the craziness from the way it's arranged. Ah, I love it. Yeah. This is See, so it's really different when you just come walk around. I'm lazy yeah. to read, so I love it when somebody tells us things. Oh yeah, for sure. You learn more and it's you interact. Always like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Always meant to connect the art with the history with the Yes, right. I love it. So yeah, this one also kind of references, you know, the time in Hawaiian history where the language itself was banned and the religious mm. practices were banned for a couple generations. 
And so that process of piecing together the Hawaiian language after all that time of not being able to speak it was kind of a crazy process. Mm. Especially because uh, with this arrangement of just four letters, there's actually over a hundred words you can make in That's Hawaiian. True. So it's a lot of the ulu. information to pull through. I say ulu. Ulu, yeah, ulu, another good one, the breadfruit. Mm -hmm. uh, P U L E, pule. Pule. Pule prayer. A lot of ones that can be made, especially when you consider the line that goes over the letters and the okina. Oh, a lot of possibilities there. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. See, my appreciation of this piece is now is just up. Perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> that me earlier coming around, just walking around, I said, oh, it's peaceful. I don't want to read because yeah. I don't want to preempt. I know yeah. there's a... You know, somebody who would be showing us around, but I was just getting the feel of being here. So yeah. I thought it was nice, but now I appreciate it more that you, you know, explain it to us. Yeah, I'm glad to be here to explain it with yeah. you. You know, this, this exhibit in particular for the Hawaii Triennial, we had six, six different exhibition spaces for the show, mm -hmm. including Foster Botanical Garden, Iolani Palace, ah. here at Hawaii State Art Museum, a Honolulu Museum of Art, Bishop Museum, uh, Royal Hawaiian Center, all yeah. happening this year Many, so it's pretty all, much yeah. just uh uh already planned yeah and who starts that off so the idea that, that was this all year would be contemporary the year. so we this is the first time we're having the hawaii triennial mm -hmm. before that it was the honolulu biennial so mm -hmm. they had the biennial every, every two, two years, years mostly focused in honolulu mm -hmm. but because of the pandemic they pushed it back one year mm -hmm. and they changed it from the honolulu biennial to the hawaii triennial to instead of focus, include instead of focusing Hawaii. on yeah, include all Hawaii. Nice, so the nice. goal for the future um, is to include the other Hawaiian islands in the nice. content planning as well. Yeah. Nice. So one of the big uh, publications throughout this whole Eva wing we have today is Elopayo Press. Mm -hmm. So that table right over there mm -hmm. has many of the Elopayo Press books oh. and all these way West like poetry vinyls you see on the wall also found in those Elopayo Press books. Mm -hmm. So, El Apago Press was started by Richard and Mark Hamasaki, two brothers of Japanese descent, who are from here in Hawaii, or who grew up here in Hawaii. Um, they started a very small arts and, literature, arts and literary publication magazine. Mm -hmm. They kind of boost up the works of both indigenous and non-indigenous artists here in Hawaii, which is what we see with all those books over there. They're from a magazine series called Seaweeds and Constructions, mm -hmm. they were very popular in the 70s where it was mostly uh, Mark Hamasaki, Richard Hamasaki, and other friends and family such as Wayne Kamwili E. Westlake, the poet we see on the walls here today. He was one of the other editors for the magazine. Nice. Good friends of Richard and Mark Hamasaki. They all had like a very a big passion for the local art scene here in Hawaii. Yeah. And here we see Richard and Mark Hamasaki's first publication they made over there. Mm -hmm. This is, this book is called Seven poems, eight photographs by Richard and Mark Hamasaki. The photographs are taken in Mark Hamasaki's signature black and white film style. And you'll see the poetry by Richard Hamasaki, also using that concrete poetry style, manipulating the shapes, the order, the letters, to change the meaning for you guys. They also produced... Typewriter. Yeah, this is <laughs> super old letters. So this, these letter correspondences are from when they were producing these 12 silk screens we see here on the wall today. So this was when Mark was studying abroad in Europe and Richard was over here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. They had to send these messages between each other so they can kind of work out these poetry slash photograph art projects they're working on. Wow. And it's funny because you can see them talk to each other in like a very brotherly way. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I don't like that one, move that. Like, oh, this is good, that one's not good though. Like, it's so brotherly, it's so nice. Pieces such as this one. This is a poem that says that that sea is sweet if you love the sea all your life. And this is one of the ones that was kind of difficult for them to produce because Mark Hamasaki was not a big fan of it when he first heard the idea. But Richard was so adamant about including this one in the series that he sent Mark a cassette recording of him reciting the entire poem. Oh. And that convinced Mark to make it. And this is a very popular print now. Nice. Wow, yeah, it's, it's so amazing when you know the story behind these things yeah. because they all of a sudden come to life yes. and uh, you see the hard work, you know, you see that, wow, yeah, I love it.
to the Hawaii State Art Museum, also affectionately known as Hi Sam. We'd like to take you on a brief tour of our galleries and sculpture garden and share a bit about the work we do. Hi Sam falls under the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, Art and Public Places Program, or APP program. The APP program was established in 1967 with the enactment of the 1% for Art Law, which designated 1% of the construction costs of new buildings for the acquisition of works of art, either by commission or purchase. Hawaii became the first state in the nation to have a percent for art law. Because our funding comes from the state, we are considered the People's Museum, and admission to the museum and all of our events are free to the public. Now that you know a bit more about our history, let's take a look around our galleries. First up is the Eva Gallery, which currently houses our In Hawaii exhibition. The artwork housed in this exhibit explore themes of inspiration, influence, insight, innovation, and inquiry in Hawaii. This quilt is titled Lao Puka Puka and was made by artist Martha Marquez who used the traditional Hawaiian eightfold design and technique to create its symmetry. She used a monstera leaf that she picked up in her neighbor's garden to cut the pattern. The color scheme is inspired by how the winter rains seem to deepen and saturate the colors of foliage against the stark black lava. Next, we'll head into our Diamond Head Gallery. This latest exhibition, My Ho'ohuli Ikalima Ikaluna, opened over the summer and actually spans across the whole museum. Grounded in Hawaiian art, this exhibition of works of art from the Art and Public Places collection reflects deeply on what it means to promote, perpetuate, preserve, and encourage culture and the arts in Hawaii today, and focuses on artwork created by Kanaka, or Native Hawaiian artists. This next set illustrates the connectivity between generations of artists in Hawaii. According to one of the show's curators, Drew Broderick, quote, each of the artists featured here, Charlton Kupa'ahi, E. Maikalani Kalahele, and Kahi Ching, have a relationship to one another. For instance, Kupa'a assisted with a number of community murals that Kahi was a part of, along with many other artists featured in the exhibition. Those artists have helped to nurture younger artists like Kupa'a. To have them in the same space next to each other is to acknowledge that history, the lineage, the influence, and the inheritance." End quote. Another exhibit in the Diamond Head Gallery is Emphasized Eye on Scale, which explores the various ways artists play with scale and how this in turn affects the viewer's responses and understanding. In our turnaround gallery, we have an exhibit titled Four Walls, which highlights sculptural works in the Art and Public Places collection that were created specifically for walls. This piece, titled Dwell No. 44 by Ted Lott, is made of a repurposed suitcase that the artist turned into a kind of structure, reminiscent of a very small dwelling. About his inspiration, Lott stated, quote, America is a land of immigrants. Most of our recent ancestors came from somewhere else, seeking a better life often with their only possessions being what they could carry, sometimes fleeing another place and leaving everything to make a new home. In using found suitcases to create miniature architectural spaces, I seek to give these disused items a new life, creating a warm and inviting space to reflect on where we came from and to house the precious and sacred items of our current prosperity." End quote.
Finally, we have reached our sculpture garden. We can't talk about the sculpture garden without talking about Mr. Chicken Pants. Mr. Chicken Pants, created by artist Mei Izumi, began with the Hawaiian trickster tale Pua Pua Lena Lena, but like all tricksters, soon took a direction all its own. The hybrid nature of the sculpture symbolizes the idea that all things are related, and we are closer to nature than we might realize. Another very recognizable feature of the sculpture garden is Vaikui by Doug Young. Vaikui is the old place name for a part of the coastline on the island of Hawaii where fresh water met the ocean. It was created in remembrance of the historic YMCA swimming pool that once occupied this space. This glass sculpture incorporates a dual layered image symbolizing the merging of the pool water with an overlay of coastal ocean water. Now that you've had a little taste of all there is here at Hi Sam, we hope you'll come see us in person. With over 7,000 works of art in our collection, there is almost always something new to see. <laughs>